In this video, I want to talk about a couple important related concepts. The concept of cognitive closure and the concept of epistemic humility. Cognitive closure is the idea that limited finite knowers that we are, human beings, we may have certain limitations. In fact, we certainly do have certain limitations and those limitations may inhibit our ability to know things. They limit, they hem us in. And what that means is that there may be certain problems, certain paradoxes, certain apparent contradictions, which in fact do have a satisfactory resolution, but we simply are unable to perhaps understand what that satisfactory resolution is. Now there could be, there are various types of cognitive closure. So a child has a cognitive closure as let's say a five or six or seven year old simply because of their developmental lim limitations or uh, their limited experience and knowledge. A 20 year old may have a cognitive closure about various issues, but they have certainly generally more knowledge than a seven or eight year old. There may be certain aspects of cognitive closure that impact the human race altogether so that perhaps there are some answers to questions we now have, but they're simply inaccessible to us as a species because perhaps as a species, we are just too limited to understand them. We uh, lack the ability to see the world in a different way, in a way that could be explained other. Now, I wanna give an illustration of what this kind of cognitive closure looks like, but first let me just give you a practical illustration. So for example, the skeptic, the atheist, or the non-Trinitarian says to the Christian who is a Trinitarian, how can you affirm that there is one God and that one God is three distinct equally divine persons? Is that not either that you have three gods or they're not all fully God or some other resolution, but there doesn't seem in other words to be a logically satisfactory resolution of the Orthodox or Trinitarian articulation of God. And it is possible, seems to me that cognitive closure may apply here. In other words, it may be that there is a resolution, but perhaps that resolution is not accessible to us as perhaps as some finite individuals or perhaps collectively as a species. This also goes in other directions. Let's say that you are not a Christian, but rather a naturalist. Uh, naturalists believe everything is, everything is explicable ultimately in terms of nature or that nature in some sense is all that exists. Now, one way to, to look at that is to say, for example, the brain produces the mind or brain states produce mental states or states of consciousness. Now, a person might object to the naturalist's view of consciousness just arising out of the functioning of the brain, like smoke arising from fire by saying, how do you explain conscious states, which appear to be fundamentally different kinds of things than brain states? The experience of tasting peppermint, for example, or smelling cinnamon, or seeing fuchsia as a color, those are just fundamentally different things than the brain states with which they are associated, which are patterns of neurons firing in the brain. How do you bring those two things together? Well, perhaps cognitive closure applies here. It could be that, in fact, we do have consciousness arising out of the brain and we are simply unable to understand it. Again, perhaps as individuals, some of us can, perhaps some can't, or maybe collectively as a species, it is just inaccessible to us. Now, in terms then of epistemic humility, what I wanna say is, I think we all need a little bit of epistemic humility when we're interacting with one another because everybody has places in their worldview or in their belief system where they are encountering paradox, where they're running into mystery, where they have apparent contradictions, where they don't know what the right answer is. Whether you're a Christian talking about the doctrine of the Trinity or you are a naturalist talking about how consciousness arises from the brain, uh, there may be cognitive closure in all of these various different aspects of our belief system that could help us explain and understand why we find it so difficult to understand the answers to these questions. Now with that in mind, I just wanna take a look at this two minute video called Impossible Nail Trick. Well, the full title, Impossible Nail Trick, a trick to make you rich in the pub. This is not the only video describing this trick on YouTube, but it's one of them. Uh, so here the guy says, you put a nail into a piece of wood and then you challenge everybody in the pub can you balance 10 nails on the head of the one nail? Uh, even trying to balance one of them seems to be, very, to be very difficult. How do you balance 10? And the, then it's gonna be very difficult, seemingly impossible to balance 10 nails. 
In terms of cognitive closure, an individual then might conclude, it's simply impossible that nobody could balance 10 nails on top of one nail. It just cannot be done. Just like God cannot be one in three or consciousness cannot arise from brain states. It has to be maybe a soul or something else. And so you've tried like this guy, all these different ways to balance 10 nails and you conclude, no, it's impossible. But again, cognitive closure. So what this fellow then goes on to do is to provide a surprisingly simple and elegant solution to the problem. This is how, in fact, you balance 10 nails on top of one nail, the head of one nail. Uh, and as he does this, uh, I want us then to think about that application that you will see from this video that the answer is surprisingly simple and intuitive once you figure it out. The challenge is ever getting there. And it could be that various objections to various belief systems, in fact, do have surprisingly intuitive and accessible, perhaps, answers, but it's simply the matter of getting in the right space. Now, what that suggests, in fact, that cognitive closure in some respects may, maybe it's sometimes absolute, but maybe it's simply a lack of imagination, a challenge to be able to think about the world in a different way and realize that, in fact, from a different perspective, you can balance 10 nails on the top of one nail. And perhaps the same is true of the doctrine of the Trinity. Perhaps the same is true of the problem of consciousness. A little bit of epistemic humility may go a long way in helping us to look at problems in a different way and begin to explore new solutions to them. Now, I can't help but conclude by giving one other great illustration of this fact or of this, this point I want to make. And that comes, it's attributed to Sir Walter Raleigh, I think in the 18th century. So famous British fellow, he was at a party and he challenged people, he says, how do you, can you, do you think I can weigh smoke? In other words, I can tell you how much smoke from a cigarette weighs. And people said, no, you can't do that. And he says, I bet I can. So he had a bet much like balancing the 10 nails on the head of one nail. So this is what he did. They got a scale and he put the cigarette on the scale, weighed it. And then he lit the cigarette and allowed it to burn down. And when it had burned down to ashes, he checked the weight again and then deducted the weight at the end from what it was at the beginning and said that is the weight of the smoke that left the cigarette burning. Now, again, that's a very clever way to look at a problem from a new solution. And it may be that because of lack of imagination or perhaps because simply lack of ability in the individual that we cannot access the simple, elegant, proper solutions to the dilemmas that we face but those solutions nonetheless may be there. So always be aware of our own, your own, my own cognitive closure, and always keep in mind a healthy dose of epistemic humility.